that's supposed to be. What's up, guys? DeekRelaxShacks.com. Thank you guys for watching in advance. I'm trying not to shake the camera here too much. It's actually just my computer. I'm getting lazy. I'm not using the HD camera. I'm actually just at my living room table next to my collection of beta fish. <laughs> Speaking of which, i got to feed them. So I'll do that over there. Um, I want to talk about just conversationally. This is one of the things. We, we have a lot of these discussions and, and kind of guest talks, live demos, and campfire, bonfire talks at Tiny House, uh, Tiny House Summer Camp, which 6 is coming up in September. Do check that out. It's awesome uh, and very intimate. But this is one of the things we talk about because this question comes up all the time in workshops I've done. Deke, I found this ridiculously cool shed that this guy in Craigslist is giving away. And I was, you know, it's like, it's either free or it's 200 bucks, you know, a dream come true, too good to be true. I can grab that shed and make it into a tiny house, voila, thereby thwarting all the normal avenues of work and money and proper building when procuring or designing, acquiring a tiny house. So what I want to talk about here, and I'm going to keep this pretty short, and I think I have a couple of pretty good points to make, and please feel free to add below. And I'm not saying it can't be done because it has been done and it has been done successfully, but this is mostly in regards to taking a POC piece of <laughs> uh, shed that say Home Depot or Walmart might prefab and, and sell and putting it atop a trailer and making a tiny house on wheels. I think it's a big, terrible no-no because the last thing this tiny house scene needs is bad press. You know, we're, you know, Shed attached to, to trailer that was salvaged from an old camper. Uh, that's another story. Uh, tips over and kills 22 on highway. So uh, don't do it, bro. Don't tase me, bro or sister. So here, uh, here's a couple reasons why I think you shouldn't do it. I really haven't had my coffee, so I'm a little bit tired, but just felt inclined to, to start this video. Um, first of all, those sheds aren't really built to last. Those companies kind of want to give you something that will need replacing. It's like the age of uh, planned obsolescence. Those things will crap out, will disintegrate. They're made with shoddy materials and they're not going to last that long. So do you want to use something like that for your lifetime or your tiny house whereupon you can put so much uh, additional blood, sweat, and tears into it? And I equate this with buying a used trailer if you don't know what you're doing. Would you build a house spending so much time and money atop a foundation made of cheap saltine crackers from the dollar store. No, it would be a very stupid move. So you buy a shed, yeah, you're going to save some money, but in the end run, you're just, you know, really basing the rest of your tiny house or your getaway around something that's so cheap and cruddy. Tiny, um, the sheds, excuse me, that are often sold at these places mass produced. And there are some good shed companies out there, don't get me wrong. Uh, one I particularly like that dabbles in the world of cabins as well as the Jamaica Cottage Shop. They, they work with real wood, actually self-milled planks. I would highly recommend them. But a lot of the sheds you're going to find, aside from the tin arrow sheds, those are just junk because they use particle board, uh, particle board, chip board, the OSB oriented strand board, which is basically, it's like the, I call it the chips of hoy, chips hoy cookies of wood. You take that stuff, which is so easily damaged by water and bloats, uh, and, you you know, you take a Chips Ahoy cookie, you dunk it. It's this nice, hard, crisp cookie, or so it would appear. You dunk it in milk, and it disintegrates immediately and turns into this, like, gelatinous ooze mush. Same thing kind of happens with this chipboard, the OSB. So I don't recommend using that. And a lot of these sheds are built entirely with that. Furthermore, the fasteners, the spacing they use, these guys are just churning these things out. They're gunning in the fasteners. Um, yeah, they'll use ring shank nails, which is great. But a lot of the fasteners are cheap. I've seen a lot of sheds built with like, you know, non-galvanized and exposed nails, non-galvanized fasteners. So that's another thing you want to look out for. Cheap roofing. A lot of times it's just roll roofing the lowest grade of asphalt shingles. You put those on a tiny house. Cheap asphalt shingles. I don't care if they have the adhesive tab. Those aren't going to last well in the wind. And when you're traveling down the highway, what are you doing? You're creating wind. You're creating your own mini storm system or hurricane, especially if there's a headwind compounding things. So you're going to lose some shingles, so it's really not a great idea. Uh, these sheds are not built except for short-distance transport when they're delivered to be uh, a, a travel trailer or a tiny house on wheels to be moved frequently. They're often framed with 2x3s, and 2x3s are great when you're building something ground-bound-wise. I use them for sheds and other stuff. Sure, that's cool. For tree houses, because you want to make things strong but light. But 2x3s, again, in terms of, you know... Uh, 
factored out, you know, true engineering, or if you if you want to ever, you know, try to adhere to the RVIA codes, which is not going to happen here, uh, they're just not going to cut it. Not going to cut the mustard, as they say or once said. So structurally, you're at a disadvantage to start with. Crappy chipboard, two by three construction, and the spacing on the construction. You know, I recommend, or most do, when building tiny houses and wheels, if you're using metal studs, wood studs, 16 on center, not 24 on center, not 48 on center or something crazy, but Deke, it's lightweight and I save time and wood. You're going to destroy your house and kill people. Please don't do it. Uh, the spacing stud-wise is usually 24 on center, and that's for the sake of economy. They want a light product that's easy to build, that's cheap to build, and that's basically what you're getting, something that's cheap. That's the recurring word here. So I would stray away from that for that reason as well. Uh, cruddy roofing, OSB, bad stud spacing, bad fastener spacing, the doors in them, you know, they make the Z uh, formation for bracing the doors, though, over time. Like, even the hinges they use, a lot of them, I look at them, are just garbage. I actually want to do a video where I'm going to walk out there uh, to one of the lots in one of the box stores and kind of show you firsthand. So uh, subscribe because we'll have that coming up and show you firsthand what, exactly what I'm talking about. Um, but I think also the sheds, a lot of them just look junky. You know, part of the reason the tiny house is caught on so well in the current media scene is because the houses are good looking. Sure, there are the naysayers like, oh, it's this, you know, self-imposed or governmental, governmentally imposed world of future Hooverville shacks I keep hearing, Mexico City shanty. Sure, there are some cruddy ramshackle ones out there, but one of the reasons tiny houses are making some headway in this, the U.S. of A. and beyond is because they're so good looking, they have curb appeal. Uh, they're just, they're cute, a word I don't use so often, but they are, they're cute. Jay Schaefer, one of the forefathers, you know, one of the current, let's say, godfathers in Tiny House scene, a name fewer and fewer are familiar with, which is kind of criminal in this day and age. He was one of the first people online to take great pictures of Tiny Houses he designed that had a lot of curb appeal and to really, you know, go the distance with them. And he really has helped the Tiny House scene. And, you know, that man, he's a friend of mine personally, he needs a nod, and I like to uh, give him one where possible. Jay Schaefer, look it up. If you don't know him, you don't really know tiny houses. I'm sorry. Uh, he's a man who doesn't get the credit he deserves. Um, but yeah, some of these sheds are just cruddy looking. T111 siding, texture 111 siding, which was used uh, predominantly in the 70s. It was for affordable housing. It was cheap. It mimics the look of plank siding. That stuff, I think, sucks. And I use it when forced once in a while. Actually, I did a treehouse video recently. I explained why I chose T111. I wasn't happy about it. But I didn't have, really have much else of a choice. That is actually the last video I did. So check out the video before this one. It might even cycle to that one after this video is over if you've made it this far. But T111 siding, to me, looks cheap. It's garbagey. Sometimes it doesn't last so well. So that's another reason a lot of these sheds are built with that stuff. So there's a couple reasons. I don't know if that's like five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Um, the base of them, a lot of times they're just cheap little two by fours. Sometimes I've seen sheds manufactured that aren't even pressure treated. So they're not going to last when you put them on the ground. I put them on the ground. Not that you should. They should be on pavers. But this really all doesn't translate so well to tiny houses and wheels and structural solidarity. So I don't want you making the headlines, even though you saved a few bucks, where your house falls apart on the highway or you put all this work into the interior of it and you're in tears later and at a loss because everything has gone to sh shoot. So I just wanted to put this video out, while not visually dazzling and entertaining, to explain a couple of the reasons why I feel tiny houses uh, and sheds, you know, sheds into tiny houses, in a wheeled sense, really don't make a lot of sense. So I hope this helps some of you guys, maybe keeps you from uh, peril, future financial danger. Um, like I said, not an exciting video, but I think this stuff's important. Please subscribe. Thank you guys, as always, for watching. I appreciate it. I'm just a little channel amidst, like, 100,000 other Tiny House channels at this point in time, and I know there's only so many hours in the day, so if you've chosen my videos, uh, I guess I'm told to click that little bell so you get updates. There's a bell somewhere down below. Subscribe and all that jazz. And maybe I'll see some of you guys at Tiny House Summer Camp 6, which I swear is a lot of fun. We've had so many repeat uh, sign-ups because each year the projects are vastly different. So thanks for watching. Again, I'm Deke, RelaxShacks.com. Check out the other videos and our stuff on my other channel, Odd USA, and we will see you later.